Hi, my name is Kelly and I'm from Texas. I was born into a rich family. My dad was the CEO of a huge tech company and my mom was the top lawyer in the state. Life was good, or so I thought. One night, I woke up to some noises from downstairs. What could that be? I headed down, but no one was in the kitchen or in the living room. The noises sounded like banging. Eventually, I followed the noises to a strange door I'd never noticed before. I reached my hand out to the doorknob, then suddenly, my mom leapt out. Ah! Honey, what are you doing here? You should be in bed. What's behind this door, mom? Nothing that concerns you. Come on, off to bed. I ran upstairs to my room, slamming the door behind me. I soon forgot all about the mystery door and the strange noises. That is, until once, in 10th grade, my friend Alex pulled me aside in the cafeteria. Kelly, I have some good news. What? Adam has a crush on you. What? How do you know? His friend told me. You see, I'd been crushing on Adam from the moment I laid eyes on him. He was the cutest guy in the school, with the cutest freckles and the sweetest smile. No way. You have to ask him out! At first I said no, but eventually Alex somehow convinced me to ask him out the next day. I approached Adam by his locker. Hey Adam! Oh. <clears throat> hey Kelly. I decided to just go for it. Do you want to go out with me? Adam looked confused. Uh, no thanks. Adam walked away. I was heartbroken. I ran home, stormed into my bedroom, and cried myself to sleep. The next morning, I woke up with puffy eyes. I checked my phone and saw a message from someone. Someone I never would have expected. Adam. Hey, I'm sorry for my blunt reply yesterday. Would you still like to go out with me? I felt like my heart had grown wings and was flying to heaven. Yes, I wanted to reply. But instead, I texted, Sure, tonight at my house? It's a date. He even put a heart emoji. And not just the regular blue or green heart, a red heart. I was so smitten. Several hours later, there was a knock at the door. It was Adam. I invited him in and we sat on the couch with some chips and soda. We were making small talk and it was going pretty well. What is that? Adam was pointing at the mystery door. I had totally forgotten about it until then. Oh, um, I don't know, some random door, I guess? Let's see what's in there. Uh, sure. We approached the door and Adam lifted his hand, just about to open the door. Suddenly, Dad appeared, almost out of nowhere. Hey guys, do you want some cookies? Dad steered us away from the door and into the kitchen. I looked at Dad strangely. He normally didn't bother chatting to any of my guests. Dad sat us down at the kitchen table and offered a plate of cookies. We sat there for a bit, just chatting, and then Adam stood up. I need to use the bathroom. It's down the hall to the right. Adam left and almost 20 minutes passed without any sign of him. Is he doing number two? I hit Dad playfully. Dad! I left to go and check on Adam, but as I turned the corner, I stopped in my tracks. The mystery door. It was open. I realized that I'd never seen it open before. Suddenly, I wondered, what was down there? Memories of my childhood swarmed to the surface. The noises. My parents' strange behavior. Were they hiding something? I slowly approached the open door when suddenly Dad grabbed my arm. Kelly, stay here. Dad sounded really serious. He left me and entered the open door, disappearing from sight. I waited there silently, uncertain what to do. About two minutes later, Dad returned with Adam. Except Adam looked horrified, literally as if he'd seen a ghost. I was shocked. What had happened to him? You're forbidden to meet with Adam ever again. I looked at Dad. What was he talking about? Dad locked the door, left without a word, and took Adam with him. 
I just stood there, confused, out of my mind. The next day, I immediately found Adam at school. He was by his locker again. Adam, what happened last night? You... Uh, who are you? I was taken aback. Um, it's me, Kelly? We went on a date last night. A date? Adam scoffed. As if. I would never go on a date with you. Adam walked away. Okay, now I was really confused. Had Adam forgotten all about our date? Why was he pretending it never happened? I watched Adam walk away and decided that maybe dad was right. I would stop talking to him. I went to my next class. While I scrolled through Instagram on my phone, bored out of my mind by Mr. Johnson's dull voice, I heard my name over the speakers. Will Miss Kelly please report to the principal's office? I frowned. I got up and headed to the principal's office. My parents were there too. Hello, Kelly. Your parents are here to pick you up. You are being unenrolled from this school. What? My dad said nothing. They took me home and sat me down on the couch. Uh, Mom? Dad? Is everything alright? We have some news, honey. Good news or bad news? We're moving. My jaw dropped. I was devastated. I loved my school, my friends, my home. But despite all my protests, my parents weren't having it. And to make matters worse, we were leaving the next day. I wouldn't even be able to have a goodbye party. The next day came and I managed to say goodbye to Alex, but that was it. We packed everything. My parents had somehow managed to sell the house already, and we left. We drove to a town on the other side of the state, completely in the middle of nowhere. My new school was this old, dingy place with just a few students. I hated it. And it was so weird. The weirdest thing about it was that they had this strange policy where everyone had to wear masquerade masks. One time in class, we were sitting there listening to the teacher when suddenly a loud scream echoed through the halls. The next thing we knew, the door flew open and this girl appeared. She had on a red masquerade mask and she looked around the room like a wild animal. <laughs> She started running around the room, wrecking things, throwing books off the shelves. She even grabbed the chalk from the teacher's hand and broke it in half. I was scared out of my mind. What was wrong with this girl? Even weirder still, none of my other classmates nor the teachers seemed concerned. They acted like this was just an average Tuesday. Eventually, after about 10 minutes, the girl calmed down and took a seat at the back of the class. I was frozen with shock. This school was weird. Later that day, I entered the cafeteria. It was less of a cafeteria and more of a tiny kitchen, and sat down among the other students. I stirred my meatloaf, which I'm pretty sure had a toenail in it, when I heard a commotion behind me. Two students were tormenting another student. I looked again and recognized the girl with the red mask, the one from my class before. The two students were laughing and shoving her. Are you a freak? The girl cowered on the floor. I got up and confronted them. Hey, leave her alone. The two kids looked at me now. Ew, does this little freak have a girlfriend? One kid shoved me and the other shoved the girl. I fell and my mask was ripped off, revealing my face. All the students gasped when they realized I wasn't wearing my mask anymore. I looked up angrily, but then I froze. The other girl had her mask ripped off too. I could see her face and it looked exactly like mine. Everyone was staring at us. They looked from my face to hers, all thinking the same thing. They look exactly the same. I was too shocked to speak. The other girl seemed like she was too shocked to speak too. But then she suddenly grabbed her mask and placed it back on and ran out the door. Hey, wait! But the girl was already gone. I got back home and immediately told my parents what had happened. Oh, honey, you probably just imagined it. But 
Don't worry about it. Just focus on your studies and forget about what you thought you saw. I sighed. Maybe mom was right. I returned to school the next day. I tried to find the girl with the red mask again, but she wasn't there. I hadn't imagined her, right? I decided to listen to my mom and just focus on my studies. Well, sort of. My mind was sort of distracted by this other... thing. Well, a boy to be exact. I was by my locker grabbing my books for my next class. I turned around and bumped into another student. My books and papers went flying. Oh, I'm so sorry. The boy said. It's okay. I bent down to gather my papers and the boy helped as well. Hey, I'm Jerry. I'm Kelly. Listen, you're in my math class, right? I looked up. I thought I recognized his blue mask. Yeah, I think so. Do you want to, um, study together sometime? I could really use the help. I felt my face go red. I was thankful this mask hid my face from him. Sure. We agreed on a date and soon we were study partners. Jerry was so sweet. We would study together every evening at my house and my parents seemed chill about it too. When we were at home, we were allowed to take our masks off. And the first time we did, I felt my heart skip a beat. Jerry was so cute. Like seriously, the cutest guy I'd ever seen. I soon started to develop a crush on him. He was cute, sweet, kind. What more could you ask for? But what happened next changed everything. It was Friday. I was looking forward to the weekend and a break. I called Jerry but got no answer. Hmm, that's strange. Maybe he was by his locker. I went over to his locker to check but then I got the shock of my life. It was Jerry kissing another girl. My heart literally shattered in my chest. I could almost hear it crack apart like shattered glass. Jerry, how could you? Jerry broke away and looked at me in confusion. How? The girl he was kissing looked at me and I gasped. It was her. The girl. The girl who looked just like me. Except instead of her usual red mask, she was wearing a green mask exactly like mine. Kelly? I... what? The girl, my twin, stepped back and bolted. Nuh-uh, you're not getting away this time. I chased after her. It was like a Mission Impossible chase scene or something. I followed her through the school all the way out into the parking lot and into the woods. Eventually, I got lost and stopped to catch my breath. Then I felt a shadow behind me. I spun around. The girl, she was standing right there. She took off her mask and looked at me. What are you doing here? I was paralyzed with fear. What? Who are you? Why do you look exactly like me? The girl hesitated. You don't know? I shook my head. You really don't know? Wow. Okay, well... You may want to sit down. We sat down right there on the ground and the girl, who I learned was called Katie, explained everything. And boy, did she blow my mind. My name is Katie and I'm your clone. You may not know this, but I've been living in your basement for the past 15 years. That is, until one day your friend, I think his name was Adam, opened the door. I saw my chance. I ran past him and broke out of my prison. Your parents were holding me captive there. You see, I was a failed experiment, an accidental clone. And they knew if the world found out about me, they would go to prison, or worse. But I couldn't bear being stuck down there anymore. I had to be free. So I escaped and I made it here. Katie paused. I felt like my mind was caving in. My clone? I was struggling to process all this. But Jerry... I'm sorry about that. I thought you knew about me too. I thought you were also keeping me captive. I hated you. 
That's why I kissed Jerry. Oh, I hesitated, then laid down on my back, gazing up at the sky. So, you're like... you're like my twin. I guess so. We were silent for a few seconds. Listen, please don't tell anyone about me, especially not your parents. If they find out where I am, they'll imprison me again. I hesitated. What should I do? Katie did seem pretty crazy. Maybe she shouldn't be let out into the world. But maybe she was just a girl who wanted to be free. I started laughing. <laughs> You're a lunatic. You really think I'm gonna let you be free? I took out my phone to call my dad. But before I could, Katie snatched my phone. You're a jerk. She ran off. I watched her leave. Watched my own clone disappear into the woods. But I never saw her again. Hi guys, my name is Milo, and I'm from New York. My friends and I were on a plane ride to Hawaii. It was myself, Liam, who was the pilot of the tiny plane, and also happened to be my biggest crush. My best friend, Kayla, and our other friend, Brittany, who I secretly didn't like all that much since I had a feeling she wanted to get with Liam. We were cruising along when suddenly an alarm rang out. Uh, what's going on? Liam looked panicked. The engine, it cut out. What? We're going down. We all screamed as the plane took a nosedive as Liam desperately tried to gain control. Quick, grab a parachute! Through all the chaos, Liam managed to hand each of us a parachute. Then he opened up the door. Get out and pull the string immediately! I fastened the parachute on, made sure Kayla was alright, then jumped out the plane. As we plummeted down, the wind whipped my hair around so I couldn't see anything. I fumbled for a string, but I couldn't find it. I started to panic. This was it. I was going to die. I would get squished like a berry as soon as I made contact with the ground. But then I felt someone grab hold of me and I looked up to see Liam. Here! As we free fell, he had managed to get to me and was now holding my string. Pull this! I nodded, grabbed hold of the string while Liam pushed off of me so he would avoid getting tangled in the parachute. I said a prayer and yanked on the string as hard as I could. The parachute opened up and I was now falling much slower. And it all seemed very peaceful all of a sudden. There was an island below us. It looked like a tiny place that was completely uninhabited. I soared down and landed right in a dense jungle. My parachute got caught, so I unbuckled myself and landed on the ground. I looked around. Kayla? Liam? Hello? Is anyone there? Milo! Over here! That was Kayla's voice. I rushed over and found Kayla stuck in a tree. Help! I'm stuck! After a while, I managed to untangle her. And then we hugged immediately. I'm so glad you're okay. Me too. What should we do? We need to find the others. I think they landed in that direction. We trekked through the jungle for hours with still no sign of the others. Do you think they're still alive? My heart dropped at the thought of never seeing Liam again. Liam and his kind smile, his hilarious jokes. No, they're alive. They have to be. We kept going until finally I cried out in relief. Look, smoke, it must be them. We rushed towards the smoke as fast as we could until finally we made it to a camp. There sat Liam and Brittany. As soon as Liam saw me, he jumped up in joy and gathered me in his strong arms. Oh, Milo, I was so worried. I was overwhelmed. Liam, the way he was holding me. No, it couldn't be. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't made it. Hey, what about me? Liam froze, realizing the scene he was making, then put me down and moved away awkwardly. Oh, um, yeah, <laughs> I, I was worried about you too, Kayla. Kayla rolled her eyes at me, but I was blushing like crazy. Liam seemed to really care about me. I was so happy, but when I turned to look at Brittany, her eyes were two balls of flame. What's so special about Milo? What do you mean? What I mean is, why do you care about her? When you filmed me, you didn't even seem that relieved. I wonder why. Kayla whispered to me and I stifled a laugh. Brittany noticed my movement and narrowed her eyes at me. Oh, you think you're just so precious, huh? What? No. Everyone hail Princess Milo. Oh, shut up, Brittany. No one cares about... Liam stepped in and put a hand on Brittany's shoulder. Guys, please, let's just calm down. <sighs> Fine. She strutted away. Liam smiled at me nervously and I smiled back. Something was different about Liam. That evening, Liam asked me if I would help him try fishing on the island shoreline, so I agreed to go with him. I noticed he hadn't asked any of the others, only me. Was this like a date? 
Just as we were about to leave, Brittany came trumpeting in and stood between me and Liam. I want to come. Uh, that's okay, Brittany. Milo and I can just... Oh, nonsense. Brittany linked her arm through Liam's, hitting me with the other elbow in the process. The more, the merrier. I looked at Liam and he smiled apologetically. I sighed. The rest of the evening was terrible. Brittany kept standing between me and Liam whenever she could, and to make matters worse, we didn't even catch any fish. Except for one moment that made my heart tremble. Liam had thrown the net and asked Brittany to go to the other side to hold it. He then asked me to help him hold his side, and as I did, he wrapped his arms around me so he could both hold it together. It was so romantic. I'm pretty sure he could feel my heart beating through my chest, and I think I could feel his too. Hey, what are you guys doing? Of course, Brittany had to come running towards us to break us up, but still, the moment had been special. For the next couple of days, we continued on like that. I was worried about whether or not we would survive. It seemed we would be stuck here for a long time, but the way things were going between Liam and I, I wasn't too bothered about it if I was being completely honest. One night, I was in a tent with Kayla. Luckily, we'd managed to salvage a few tents from the plane wreck the day before. I don't know, it's something about Liam. What do you mean? He's acting different around me, like different good. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I think he might like me. Really? Yeah, well, what do you think? Um, Kayla pondered for a bit. To be honest, I don't think he does. My heart sank. What, really? I was surprised by Kayla's response. She knew I'd been crushing on Liam for ages. Why would she say that? But, I'm sorry, Milo. I'm just telling you the truth. That's what I think. I nodded sadly. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's just, I really like Liam. I've had a crush on him for what feels like forever. I never thought he liked me back. Suddenly, we heard a loud noise outside and we came running out. Liam was outside our tent sprawled on the floor. It looked like he'd just tripped over. Liam? Uh, don't mind me. <laughs> uh, how much did you hear? Liam turned red, then he looked at me, then glanced away. Um, all of it. I gasped. Um, listen, I wasn't thinking straight. I... No, please, I... I'm glad you said that. You are? Yeah, because I like you too. I heard Kayla gasp beside me. I was shocked to my core. You like her? <laughs> Milo, do you want to go somewhere else to chat? I nodded, feeling like I was floating on a cloud. Sure. Um, are you sure you don't want me to come? I looked at Kayla strangely. Why would she want to come? This was the moment I've been waiting for forever. Um, no, I think I'm fine. Kayla looked really bothered for some reason. I wondered why. But then, when Liam held my hand and gently led me away, I soon forgot all about Kayla. Liam and I walked in silence at first as we walked deeper into the jungle. Then Liam led me to a cliffside where we had a gorgeous view of the rest of the island and the sea beyond. I found this secret spot on our first day here. It's beautiful. Liam looked at me. Not as beautiful as you. I smiled. Liam lifted a hand and tucked a strand of hair behind my ear. I gulped nervously. Slowly, he leaned in and we kissed. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever experienced. Later, we went back to the campsite long after the others had fallen asleep. And before I retired to my tent, Liam promised me we'd hang out again tomorrow. Words couldn't describe how happy I was then. The next morning, as Liam promised, we went out for a stroll on the beach. When we returned, Brittany was fuming. You two just ran off and left Kayla and I to do all of the chores. Brittany, it's fine. No, they can't just act like they're on holiday. We're stranded on an island for Pete's sake. We might actually die. I looked down in shame. Brittany, you're absolutely right. Don't mock me. I wasn't mocking. Liam, why would you want to be with this worthless pile of garbage? Hey, you take that back. Seriously? But she's so ugly and... Don't speak to her that way. She's much prettier than you. Besides, I don't even care about that. Her personality is a hundred times more beautiful than you. Brittany looked like a balloon about to pop. <laughs> Brittany turned on her heel and disappeared to her tent. Liam, Kayla, and I glanced at each other in confusion. Suddenly, Brittany returned with a bucket in her hands. She stormed towards me. I noticed what she had in the bucket. Tons of empty clams. That had been lunch for today. Do you still think she's pretty now? With a grunt, Brittany lifted the bucket and dumped the clams all over me. I screamed in horror 
while Liam and Kayla shouted at Brittany in annoyance. Brittany! You should be with me, Liam, not this brat. Brittany, I cannot believe you right now. Maybe I should leave. No, don't leave, stay. No, really, I'll go. You're running low on fresh water anyway, and Brittany was right. We've been slacking off on our chores. I grabbed a bag and some empty bottles. I'll see you all soon. But Milo... I leaned over and kissed Liam on the cheek. Really, it's fine. I'll give everyone some space. I went off and trekked into the jungle. I decided that the fresh water would probably be somewhere in the middle of the island. I headed towards the center, keeping an eye out for any animals, because usually animals meant a sign of nearby water. I walked towards a clearing and decided to sit down and rest for a while under a tree. I closed my eyes and... And suddenly, I heard an alarming crash, and a giant boulder was heading straight towards me. It tumbled down the hill and bounced off each ledge. I bolted to my feet and somersaulted out of the way, mere inches from getting crushed to a pulp. As I looked up, I caught sight of a whip of blonde hair running off. Someone had tried to kill me. They had probably shoved the boulder over on purpose. I was too stunned to even move. I had to catch my breath, but then I realized who it had to be. Brittany. I raced back to the camp as fast as I could. When I arrived, Brittany was sitting by the fire as if nothing had happened. Liam was sitting in his tent and Kayla was nowhere to be seen. She must be at the beach or something. Brittany just tried to kill me. What? Um, yeah, what? Don't try to deny it. What are you talking about? Don't tell me you forgot all about what boulder you just tried to squish me with. Milo, are you insane? I've been here the whole time. But who? Liam looked apologetically at me. I'm sorry to agree with Brittany, but she's right. She's been here since you left. Then who? Suddenly, Kayla appeared out of breath. Hey, what's up? I froze. No, it couldn't be. I decided that piece of blonde hair I'd seen must have been a trick of the light. Maybe no one had tried to murder me. Maybe it was just bad luck. Never mind. Milo, are you okay? Yeah, I... Do you want to take a walk to clear your mind? I hesitated, but then I agreed. It was probably a good idea. Sure. Kayla smiled and linked her arm in mine, then we headed off into the jungle. I realized we were heading towards the cliff, where Liam and I had shared our first kiss. As we reached the cliff, I squinted my eyes at the horizon. Was it just me, or was that a boat? Kayla, look! What is it? A rescue boat! We're saved! Oh... I turned to her gleefully, but the look on her face made me hesitate. Um, Kayla? Kayla turned towards me. I'm sorry, Milo. For what? For this. Kayla stepped forward, heartless, cold, emotionless, and shoved me. I lost my balance and fell back. The sheer drop was right behind me. I was going to die. But at the last second, I managed to grab hold of a protruding branch. Kayla, help me! Kayla walked to the edge and just stared at me, making no attempt to help. Why are you doing this? We're best friends! Liam is mine, Milo. What? Liam will be with me. You were the one who tried to kill me with that boulder? It had to be done. You don't deserve Liam. But Kayla, we've been friends since childhood. You're going to throw all that away and kill me just for some guy? Liam is not just some guy. Kayla took a breath, calming herself. He's much more than that. You're insane. No. Kayla stepped forward, ready to peel back my fingers and send me to my doom. Ah! Kayla reached over, but suddenly someone leapt forward and tackled her to the ground. I heard commotion as Kayla and the person that I assume was Liam fought. Finally, I heard my name called. Liam, yes, I'm here. But it wasn't Liam who appeared and pulled me up to safety. It was Brittany. Milo, are you okay? I, yes, you saved my life. Brittany nodded. Of course. Listen, I'm sorry for the way I've been behaving. It's not right. I hope you can forgive me. Of course I can. Suddenly, Liam appeared from the jungle, panting. Milo, I heard screaming. Are you okay? Yes, Kayla tried to kill me. And I'll do it again. Suddenly, Kayla appeared, clearly not unconscious, and charged at me like a bull. At the last second, I leapt out of the way, and Kayla went flying over the cliff edge, disappearing into the ocean below. We stared over the edge, lost for words. Kayla was gone. Later, we hailed down the boat with a fire to signal them that we were here. And when we boarded and sailed away from the island, I was hit by overwhelming sadness. Kayla had been my best friend, but she had also been my attempted murderer. 
As I stared at the island, I suddenly gasped. On the shore of the island, waving back at me eerily, was a girl. And I was pretty sure it was Kayla. Music blared from the television as I danced and sang to the songs of June. Who is June, you ask? Only the most famous and talented singer ever to walk the face of the earth. Hi, Hannah. Mom stepped into the living room and grabbed the TV remote from the sofa. She moved as if to change the channel, and I reared up like a tiger. Mom, don't you dare. Excuse me, did you purchase this television? Mom turned the television to one of her sitcoms. I snatched the remote and changed it back. I was here first, and I'm watching June. Mom tried to grab the remote from my hand, but I held on tightly. I bit Mom's hand. <gasps> Hannah! With the remote in hand, I ran to the front door and threw the remote outside. When Mom went to get the remote, I locked her out of the house. Now no one was going to disturb me while I was watching June. Hi, my name is Hannah, and I'm from New York. I've been a fangirl of June for as long as I could remember. I have all of his music, his merch, and even a six-foot poster of him over my bed. Yeah, I know June has never revealed his face, and I have no idea what he really looks like, but his voice is so mesmerizing. And besides, what girl doesn't love a bit of mystery in her life? As a fangirl, it's my duty to bring up June in as many conversations as I possibly can. So one day, when Mrs. Joseph, my English teacher, asked the class, Who makes you happy? It was only right that when I answered, I'd answer with June's name attached to it. Mrs. Joseph went around the class taking answers from the other students. And when she got to me, I stood confidently. June makes me happy and cheerful because of the amazing music and videos he produces. June! I rolled my eyes. Bianca and I knew each other since kindergarten, and we were actually friends from preschool to primary school. But in high school, she fell into the popular crowd, became a netballer, and became really mean. Our friendship died soon after that. June will never like a loser like you. June could be standing right in front of you, and he'll never see you because you're so boring. All the popular kids began to laugh. I turned red as a cherry as I sank into my chair. I hated Bianca. Hey, Bianca, the only reason anybody notices you is because you're loud and obnoxious. Well, it could also be those uneven bangs, but hey, I smiled. Aiden was my best friend, and I always knew I could count on him to back me up. Bianca touched her hair self-consciously. My mother always told me that if I didn't have anything nice to say, then I shouldn't say anything at all. Aiden turned around and put his back to Bianca. The class guffawed, and Bianca glared at me, but she didn't say another word. Thank you, I winked at Aiden. When I was nine years old, Aiden moved into our neighborhood. Over the years, we became best friends, even more so when Bianca ditched me. He's usually very shy and quiet, but he hates when his friends are being taken advantage of. He's super caring and super cute. But don't you dare tell him I said that. That's between us, okay? The bell rang and the students filtered out of the classroom. As we walked to our lockers, Aiden turned to me. So, what is it about this June character that has you so head over heels about him? Well, not only does he have an amazing set of pipes, he also does a lot of charity work which shows that he's caring and thoughtful. How can you like someone without even seeing who they really are? I mean, what does he have to hide? He's always wearing that ridiculous mask. Did you ask me about June to make fun of me? I love June. I feel as though I'm connected to him. That's more than I can say for you right now. I turned to walk away and Aiden held my hand. Look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get you upset. You know, I hate it when you're mad at me. Well, stop saying things to get me mad at you. It's really quite simple. We laughed. Another bell rang. Look, I've got one more class. I'll catch up with you tonight. I nodded and watched as Aiden walked towards his class. I was still kind of annoyed. What did Aiden have against June? Aiden was always supportive of me and motivated me in everything I did. Was he jealous of my fan crush on June? I hustled home because I wanted to get started on my history paper. But when I got there and opened Instagram, history was the last thing on my mind. I screamed as I read the post from June's fan page. June will be having a concert next Friday, and he has got a surprise for his fans! Next Friday was my birthday! I needed to be at that concert no matter what. 
As I scrolled through, I saw tons of posts gossiping about rumors that June may reveal his true identity at the concert. Immediately, I messaged Aiden and told him to call me as soon as he got home. About an hour later, Aiden called. Have you been on Insta? Did you see June's post? He's going to reveal himself next Friday at his concert! Well, at least that's the rumor. That will be the best birthday gift ever! Slow down, Anna. Do you want to go to the concert with me? I doubt Mom and Dad will let me go alone, but they trust you. So what do you say? So, if I take you to this concert, then I don't have to get you anything else for your birthday? I still want my cheesecake, Aiden. Don't play with me. Okay, fine. I'll organize the tickets, and it's a date. I hung up the phone. I was on cloud nine. My birthday was going to be perfect. Early the next morning, I checked Insta again before I went to school, and what I saw had me shook. June's concert was sold out! No! I was about to turn off my phone when I came across Bianca's video in which she held up her tickets for June's concert. I'm so sorry for all the losers who didn't get any tickets to June's concert. I called Aiden frantically. Did you get the tickets? Hannah, I plan on getting them today. Today? I knew I should have gotten the tickets. All the tickets are sold out, Aiden! Hannah, I'm so sorry. I was sure I could get my hands on two tickets. Let's face it, Aiden. You're jealous of June, and you didn't want to go to this concert with me in the first place. At least you could have been honest about it. You ruined my birthday! I knew something like this was going to happen! I wasn't planning on missing June's concert. I had to get my hands on a ticket no matter what. The days leading up to my birthday, I avoided Aiden. I didn't answer any of his calls or text messages. If I saw him in the hallway, I pretended he wasn't there. I couldn't believe that the only thing I wanted for my birthday was out of reach. So, Hannah, what will you be wearing to June's concert this Friday? Oh, that's right. Poor Hannah didn't get a ticket. Bianca and her friends laughed. You're right. I don't have a ticket, but I also don't have a black eye. Before Bianca could register what I said to her, I punched her in the eye. Hard! She stumbled backwards and fell into Aiden's arms. Hannah! What is wrong with you? What is wrong with me? What are you? Bianca's little puppet! Hannah, words are one thing, but hitting Bianca, you should have walked away. One of Bianca's friends spoke up. Didn't you hear? Bianca and Aiden are going to June's concert together. I glared at Aiden and walked away. Hannah, wait! but I didn't stop. I ran all the way home and slammed the door to my room. How dare Aiden yell at me in front of Bianca and her stooges? And on top of it, he's going to the concert with her! I had to stop them. The day before my birthday, I walked into school on a mission. Bianca brought her tickets to school every day, but today, she wasn't going to take them back home. I waited until lunchtime to make my move. I sat in the corner of the cafeteria and watched as Bianca waved her tickets in the air before she stuck them in the front pocket of her bag. Now was my chance. I got up with my tray in hand and bumped into Bianca and threw the bag on the floor. You dweeb! I'm so sorry, Bianca! I used the tray as a shield to grab the tickets between my fingers. I placed the bag back on the bench next to her. That's why losers aren't going to see June tomorrow. Bianca and her friends sniggered. Who's the loser now? I walked away quickly. A smile spread across my face. Hannah! I kept walking. I didn't stop. Hannah! Give Bianca back her tickets! I stopped and spun around. What did you just say? The tickets you took from Bianca's bag! Give them back! I looked over at Bianca who searched her bag dramatically. You thief! I looked at Aiden. Are you going to make me give them back, Aiden? I know Bianca won't, or I'll give her another black eye to match the one her bad makeup job is trying to hide. Aiden walked over to me and snatched the tickets from under the tray. I dropped the tray on his foot, took the tickets, and tore them up. The entire cafeteria grew silent. I watched as Bianca sank to her knees and began to cry. It served her right after all the damage she'd done to others over the years. Sadness washed over Aiden's face. I came to the cafeteria to find you because I wanted to show you this. Aiden pulled two tickets from the pocket of his shirt. They were tickets to June's concert. Aiden, I... Aiden turned away from me and walked over to Bianca and handed her the tickets. 
Bianca hugged Aiden and mouthed thank you to me with a smile on her face. I kicked the tray on the ground and stormed out of the cafeteria. The next morning, my alarm clock screamed at me and I threw it across the room. It was my birthday. Last night, I begged my parents to stay home so I wouldn't have to face Bianca today. Luckily for me, they agreed to let me take the day off from school. I grabbed my phone and expected to see a happy birthday text from Aiden at 12 o'clock, which was our ritual, but there was none. After what happened yesterday, I wasn't sure if our friendship was gonna survive. I still couldn't believe that I had stolen Bianca's tickets and tore them up, which had cost me my tickets to see June and possibly my friendship with Aiden. By the time I dragged myself off my bed, both my parents had already left for work, but they left me a happy birthday card for me on the kitchen counter with breakfast. I spent my day sulking, watching television and eating junk food. Not the way I planned to spend my birthday, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. At around 5 p.m., my parents burst into the living room. Mom held a large rectangular box in her hand. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, sweetheart! They looked on eagerly as I slowly opened the box. In the box was a beautiful red dress and one concert ticket for June's concert. In the box was a note. Happy birthday. I hope you wear this for tonight. I'm sure you'll look beautiful. My eyes widened as I clutched the ticket in my hand. Is this for real? My parents nodded and I jumped up from the sofa and hugged them. Thank you. Over the next few hours, mom helped me with my hair and makeup as I got ready for the concert. I couldn't believe that I was actually going. I wish I had someone to share June's experience with, but at least it was better than watching movies on the sofa. Once dressed, my parents dropped me off at the entrance of the concert. Have fun, baby. Mom and dad gave me a little wave before they drove away. Nervously, I walked towards the gate and stood in line with the rest of June's fans who were chatting excitedly. When I got to the head of the line and handed over my ticket, the guy looked at me and then called over one of his associates. My heart skipped a beat. Was something wrong with my ticket? Is something wrong? The guy behind the counter said, No, but we've been asked to personally escort you to our VIP section. VIP? My eyes twinkled. The man smiled and nodded. His associate walked up to me and introduced himself as Brian. As we walked through the crowd, I spotted Bianca, who waved. I'm off to VIP! The look of awe, followed closely by disgust on her face, was worth it. I placed an L on my head and smiled at her. I knew it was a bit mean, but it felt so satisfying. But where was Aiden? I expected him to be draped on Bianca's arm like every other boy that ever went anywhere with Bianca. I soon forgot about Bianca and Aiden when I arrived at the VIP section and took my seat. The VIP had food, drinks, servers, but I was too excited to eat or drink anything. About 15 minutes later, the lights dimmed, smoke filled the stage, and I chanted with the other fans in anticipation, June! 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 The crowd roared when June stepped onto the stage and began to perform. I sang all his songs word for word. I couldn't believe that this was really happening. Then something happened that changed my life forever. After his final song, June addressed the audience. I'd like to thank you all for joining me tonight and making this concert a success. The crowd cheered. Tonight is the birthday of someone who is very special to me. I did this concert with her in mind, and yes, the rumor of my big reveal tonight is true. Help me count down, and then I'll remove my mask. As the crowd counted down, anticipation and excitement filled the air. Three, two, one. June pulled the mask off his face, and I gasped. Aiden! Suddenly, the spotlight shone on me. I spent all this time hiding, afraid of telling people who I was, scared of what they'd think. But when I thought of my friendships, I realized that I was keeping a part of me hidden, and I didn't want to do that anymore. Aiden looked directly at me. Hannah, you mean the world to me. I chose my stage name based on the month we first met. You have changed my life in so many ways. Aiden jumped down from the stage and walked towards me. My heart fluttered as our eyes met. He held my hand. I'm sorry that I made you feel as though I didn't care. The fact is, I care about you. A lot. I'd love to take you out on a real date, if you'd let me. I nodded my head, too afraid to speak. Aiden leaned in and kissed me in front of thousands of people. Our first kiss! The crowd cheered. Aiden pulled away. Happy birthday, beautiful. 
Then he kissed me again.